This video is going to teach you a little bit about Carnot cycle and Carnot efficiency. To begin with, on the right, I've got a heat engine. In my heat engine, I've got the hot reservoir, the actual engine itself, and the cold reservoir. And we know from the second law that energy is flowing from the hot to the cold. Now, we also know about the efficiency of this engine. It's a ratio of the thermal energies coming from the hot reservoir to the thermal energy going into the cold reservoir. But in the early 1800s, Sadie Carnot thought, well, you know, there's a problem here. The problem is that all the energy that I think I have in the hot reservoir isn't being used up in doing this whole process. So the pipes are actually radiating some of the energy and I've got energy loss. What if you got rid of the pipes? So you didn't have that radiated loss. Then the ratio for your efficiency becomes just a ratio of the temperatures. So this became the Carnot efficiency, which is the best you can ever expect to have. The Carnot efficiency is 1 divided by the ratio of the temperature of the cold divided by the temperature of the hot in kelvins. Make sure you got to use, kel use kelvins because Kelvins aren't just a temperature scale, they're also an energy scale. So let's take a look at the Carnot cycle itself. Here's a little animation to show you what's going on with the piston attached to a cam so you can see what kind of work is being done. So here I have energy flowing in, heating up the gas, and then I have an insulator letting it expand, and then the energy flows out, and then I'll put another insulator to let it finish compressing. So in terms of the processes, I have an 80 uh, isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, then I'm going to have an isothermal compression followed by an adiabatic compression. This process is just about impossible because I'm switching the cylinder around, one of the material that's around the outside, putting styrofoam around it to insulate it, letting heat flow in, flowing out. It's really not going to happen, but this is the best we can do. So this is our tool for measurement. We're always looking for the get a Carnot cycle out of our heat engine. So let's take another look at what's going on in the Carnot cycle. There are basically four, four phases or four processes in the Carnot cycle. So here I've got a little example. I've got this hot reservoir and I've got a cylinder with a piston in it. And that's your isothermal expansion. So the hot reservoir hits the gas and that causes the gas to expand. The next process is where I've replaced the hot reservoir with an insulator. Think of it as styrofoam around it. So now I've got adiabatic expansion. That means no energy is allowed to go in or out and it just expands on its own. Then very quickly I remove that styrofoam insulator and replace it with some kind of cold reservoir. You can almost think of this as ice. And so now at this point the gas is going to contract and I'll get isothermal compression. So it's attracting at a constant temperature. And that's followed up by the fourth and final phase. And that's where we put an insulator again to let it finish compressing as much as possible. And that's going to be my adiabatic compression. So you're going to need to know these cycles. Isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, isothermal compression, adiabatic compression. And the order that they're given here as well as knowing what the Carnot efficiency is.